This is a, a micro pattern of sorts. Uh, this is an imitation for a small yellow sally stonefly adult. And in terms of stoneflies, this would be considered a, a micro-sized stonefly, uh, typically done in like 16s and 18s. We'll go ahead and do this on a size 18 today. And the parts of this fly uh, will use some ginger or kind of yellow ginger colored biots uh, for the tail. And we'll divide those or help divide those with a little bit of uh, bright red or orange dubbing to imitate the little uh, color differ differentiation on the back of the, the natural. The body itself or the abdomen is a, a turkey or goose biot matching the same color as the tails and we'll do a dubbed underbody underneath that. And then our wings are going to be done out of medallion sheeting material. Our thorax will be a dubbing color that, to match our, our abdomen. And then we'll palmer a, a grizzly dyed yellow or pale yellow hackle feather uh, through the thorax to imitate the legs. On a lot of these small flies, especially patterns like this that sit real flush, I will use a, a little spot of tulip paint, which is a fabric paint right up here on top of the, the thorax to allow the angler to see it a little bit easier in, in low light conditions or if there's a lot of glare because this fly does sit down so flush in the water. So let's go ahead and put a hook in the vise and go ahead and, and tie this one. The hook that we're going to use for this is a a 3x long uh, nymph hook and it just allows us to do the, the little bit longer body that the stonefly has. So we'll go ahead and position that in our vise. We'll work with a beige colored ultra thread, just a tan color. Again, something that's uh, fairly neutral and matches most of the other colors on the pattern. Go ahead and get our thread started and we're going to wrap this back so that it, our thread is directly above the barb of the hook. And the first thing that we'll apply once we get back here is a small ball of dubbing and we'll use just some some red fine antron dubbing um, or some bright orange. We'll take just a little bit of red and we're going to dub just a small ball to help divide the tails which is a, a common technique for dividing tails and it works well on, on microflies um, as long as you keep your ball fairly small. So we don't want to build a lot of bulk in this and, and make things disproportionate to the body and, and the other parts of the fly. So we'll dub a small amount of that. We want to make sure that that's fairly tight on the thread because we want that little ball, once we've dubbed it on, to be tight on the hook to help keep those tails separated. And again, we'll dub a ball on there that's, that's roughly about the size of the eye of the hook, maybe just slightly larger just about like so. Now we're ready to, to do our tail and for that I'm going to work with some goose biots and these are a goose biot that's dyed kind of a, a sulfury yellow color. Uh, we'll come in and just take two of those and the nice thing about the biots is we can work with the natural curvature that the biots have uh, again to help do a divided tail. If you wanted to do uh, this pattern in even smaller sizes uh, you can eliminate that little ball of dubbing and just use the, the thickness of the hook wire back here to help separate those tails along with the curvature of the biot. We'll tie these in one at a time. So I'll lay the one on the back side of the hook first and my tail length is going to be about a, a third of the hook shank in length. Just press that against the side of the hook and go ahead and capture that with my thread right in front of the ball of dubbing. I've got just a couple wild strands of dubbing will come in and just trim those out. Take the other biot, come in on the near side of the hook, making the tail the same length as the one on the back side. And again, tie that down in front of the ball of dubbing to help keep the tail separated and split. Now we'll wind forward just to make sure that we keep the underbody smooth because we don't want to build up any bumps. I'm going to wrap up over the butt ends of the biots to the midpoint of the hook, pull those back, and come in and trim those off right flush to the hook shank. And again, we want to make sure that we're, because we're going to wrap a biot to do the body, even though we'll put a little dubbing to help smooth things out, we want to try to keep that underbody as smooth as possible um, so that we, we still get a nice natural shape to the, to the body of the fly. The next thing that we're going to tie on will be our biot that we're going to use to wrap for the body. And again, you can work with either turkey or goose. We'll go ahead and do this out of a goose biot again. 
Um, the turkey biots, and I just wanted to show you the difference real quickly, the turkey biots will give you a little bit longer biot. And I'll just separate one out and hold it to compare to the size of the goose biot. So if you are doing a little bit larger size, um, or even if you're just starting out tying these smaller flies, a turkey biot sometimes is nice because it's a little longer in length, you have more material uh, to get a hold of it with your hackle pliers to do your wrapping. So we'll take a goose biot, we'll trim this off, and it's generally a good idea to wet this a little bit before you tie it in, um, and you can just do that. Saliva is great for that. We'll just take it and wet it in our mouth, and then we're going to go ahead and tie this in by the tip of the biot. So I'm going to come in and just trim back the tip a little bit so that we've got a little bit thicker part of the biot to tie to the hook and capture that right on the near side of the hook in front of the tails. Now we want to dub just a thin underbody to wrap this biot over. And we'll work with some super fine dubbing. Again, we want a real fine dubbing and a, a color that's similar in, in shade to our biot. Take just a small amount of that. And we're basically just going to create a little cushion for that biot to be wrapped on top of and add just a little bit of size um, or, or width to the, the body that this stonefly would have. Unlike the mayflies and the little midges, which are, are real tiny and petite, even though these small stones um, are small in size, they still have that characteristic shape that a stonefly body would have. So we'll wind this forward, just a slight taper, and bring that just up to the midpoint of the hook and stop there. Now I'll go to my hackle pliers and we'll grab a hold of the biot and we'll go ahead and wrap this. Take one complete turn right at the tail of the fly. Make the stone fly. And then we'll go ahead and wrap forward. To where our thread is hanging and go ahead and tie off at that point. Release your hackle pliers, take a couple more tight turns of thread, and then again we want to come in and get a real close cut on that biot. So we'll move our thread out of the way so that we don't cut the thread and trim the biot off as close as we can get to the shank of the hook. Now I'm going to advance my thread forward to the eye of the hook, and rather than tying in the wing material, since it's kind of a, a trude style wing, rather than tying it in back here at the biot and building a lot of bulk, we're going to tie it in at the eye and then fold it back over the top of the thorax like a wing case just to eliminate some of the bulk and allow you to get more material in the front portion of the fly. And for our wing case, we're going to work with um, some yellow dyed medallion sheeting. And we'll work with a strip of this that's going to be just slightly wider in width than the, than the abdomen of the fly, the widest point of the abdomen. So again, we'll cut this just like we did on the, the previous fly. Just nick it with our scissors and then we'll draw the material back into our scissor blades to get a consistent width. And when we tie this on, we're going to use the same technique that we used on the, on the previous fly. We'll fold this around our tying thread, but this time I'm going to hold on to the, the two folded ends in my, my bobbin hand and bring that back to the hook. And again, I'll lay it on the near side of the hook and let the thread roll it and wrap it around the hook shank right at the eye of the hook. Take a couple additional turns of thread to make sure that that's locked in place. And then I'll take my thread back right in front of where the, where the abdomen ended or where we stopped wrapping the biot. Now we can tie our hackle feather in. And our hackle feather, we're going to work with a, a, a whiting 100 pack. Uh, this is a grizzly dyed pale yellow. And this has been pre-sized uh, for the size 18 hook that we're working on. So we'll go ahead and select a feather. And to prepare that, we'll come in and trim the base of the feather off to even it up. We'll pull a few fibers out to the side of the stem, and we'll come in and make a cut on each side of the stem. We'll leave just a few barbs sticking out to the side so the thread has something to grab a hold of and keep it from pulling out when we start to wrap it. Come back to the hook. We'll set that in. 
right in front of our biot with two or three good tight turns. And then we're going to go back to our super fine dubbing and dub the, the remainder of the thorax. So we'll work with that same uh, pale yellow shade that we used underneath the biot. Pull just a little bit of that out of there. And for the thorax, we want to create a little bit of a tapered thorax, starting it a little thicker right at our tie-in point of the hackle and gradually getting a little bit thinner as we work towards the eye just to reduce some of the bulk at the eye of the hook. We'll wrap, cover up our tie-in point, make that just slightly larger than the, than the diameter of the, the biot abdomen, and then just a nice gradual taper as we come forward to where the medallion sheeting is tied in. At this point, we can go ahead and wrap our hackle feather. We'll take one full turn of hackle right where the, the dubbing and the biot meet, and then we're going to palmer this up through the thorax. And we'll do that in, in about two or three turns. We don't want to pile a bunch of hackle on here, so we'll just come right up to where our thread is hanging at the eye, and we'll go ahead and tie that off. Just take two, maybe three wraps of thread, and then we'll come in with our scissors and trim that stem off right down next to the, the head of the fly. Now our final step is to form the wing, and to do that, we're going to take our thread and just kind of zigzag or walk it back into the hackle, or about midway into the thorax. I'm just going to take one turn so I'm midway into the dubbing and where the hackle is wrapped. Take the medallion sheeting. Pull it straight back over the top of the fly. Help compress the hackle to get it down underneath the, the medallion sheeting for the wing. Hold that there, and we'll come around with a loose wrap of thread. Again, kind of zigzag the thread to work it in and around the hackle so we don't compress it. Take one more loose turn and then tighten. And then two more tight wraps of thread just to hold things in place. Okay, and at this point, we're ready to whip finish. So we'll go to our whip finisher. And we're going to whip finish actually back in the hackle where we've just made that tie down of the medallion sheeting. So we'll bring our whip finisher in there. Take about three turns with the whip finisher. Go ahead and remove the tool. And in this case, rather than coming in and, and actually trying to cut the thread where we know we're going to trim some hackle, if you just leave your scissors open, and this actually works real well on real small flies, these little micro flies when you're trimming the thread at the head. Rather than actually closing the scissor blades, if you've got a good sharp scissor, you can just nick it and it'll break off or, or slice it flush with the material. Now we can cut our wings to length. We're going to come back here just slightly short of the tips of the tails, cut the medallion sheeting, Take our scissors and come in and round off the sharp edges. And again, a rotary vise will certainly help with this, just to give that wing a little bit of shape. And now our final step is going to be to put that little spot of orange tulip paint right up on the top of the thorax up here with our dubbing needle. So we'll go to our tulip paint. Um, and this is just a um, basically like a vinyl paint when it dries. It dries fairly quickly. You can get it in a variety of different fluorescent colors. We'll just squeeze a, a little bit of this up on the top of the tube and grab that with our dubbing needle. So we've just got a little drop of it, almost like you're going to apply head cement. And then we'll bring that back to the fly. And right on top of that tie-in area where we've got those thread wraps holding the, the wing in, in place and where we've whipped finished, just come in and put a drop of that right up on top of the, the, top of the thorax. And that gives you a great little sight indicator. Again, if, if you're fishing low light conditions or you're looking into the glare, um, that gives you a great little sight indicator, and it's something that builds up no bulk at all. You can do this on a lot of these small little dry flies to make them a lot easier to see while you're out there on the water fishing them. But again, this is a, a great little micro stonefly pattern. Um, Sally's are all over the place, literally one of the most common stonefly hatches that you'll find on many of our trout rivers. Uh, it's a great pattern that I certainly hope you get out and, and enjoy.